Welcome to another edition of Turn 6 Garage and today we're discussing the Mitsubishi Colt. The Mitsubishi Colt was sold here in Australia from September 2004 all the way until June of 2011. This was one of the last Colts ever sold in Australia being a late 2010 build, early 2011 complied car and being a 2011 model year car as well. But the question is, should you buy one? Is this a car that's worth the effort? Or is this some super mini that is just ordinary to say the least? Well, one of the reasons you'd want to buy a Colt is because this car is quite roomy. When you come to sit in this thing, you really find that there's a lot of room, especially if you're tall like me, and a lot of headroom, leg room, shoulder room in the front. It's, it's quite a roomy car. It's quite spacious and everything feels to hand, everything feels like it's in a good place. It's actually a nice place to sit in, especially for a car of this vintage. And that's one reason you'd really want to buy a coal. Now another reason you'd want to buy a coal is because these things are really cheap. And is this a sort of cheap car that's cheap for a reason? Or is this car really worth its money being good value? Well, there's a few things to this. Number one, you have to consider A, how many were sold, and number two, how reliable they were. And with the Colt, if you're going for one with a manual gearbox, there really isn't much to worry about. If anything, it's a very strong, cheap little car. But, um, discuss that later about the other transmission option. When you come to drive the Colt, it's really quite... When you come to drive the Colt, it's actually not a bad car to drive. It's not the most precise car in the world, I can tell you that right now. The steering's a bit understeery. It's, it's, not, it's a bit vague. It's not quite as dynamic as a Getz or a Micra. But the ride's pretty good. So there is a bit of a trade-off here. It is more a long-distance type car than a short-haul, turny little super mini. It kind of feels like a grown-up big car rather than a small one, not only because of the space, but the way it drive. Now, this specific example has the 1.5-litre 4A91 inline-four engine. It is a very unusual engine being a Mitsubishi, being a timing chain engine. That's because this car was designed in conjunction with Daimler Chrysler, who were designing the Smart 4.4 the same platform as the Mitsubishi Colt. And in this one it is mated to the correct transmission, a five-speed manual box, which is pretty good, although as you can see on a corner like that, the front likes to scrabble, it is quite understeery on these little back roads. You try and throw it around, you, you notice the chassis limitations, the front end grip is especially brilliant, and in this car the suspension really help if it was either replaced with something better or changed. But, the plus side, the turning circle is excellent. So, there's definitely some pluses and minuses with the way it drives, but fundamentally, for a little car of its period, not bad. So the styling of this thing is pretty generic I could say. It's just a one big box design like a Honda Jazz. But it's not bad. It's not offensive. So it isn't an offensive car to look at or to drive or to sit in. So, so far so good. One real positive is the driver comfort. These seats are really really nice. Even if you're tall like me they're actually quite supportive. The same cannot be said for the rear ones though. It's just one big foam bench, no contours, no nothing. It's just got no support in it. And if you're on a long journey and you're in the front of this car, that's not a bad place to be. In the back, mm, yeah, don't expect to get comfortable. Other things to think about this car is that the rear seats, although they're not comfortable, they do have some party trick. They are sliding. One hand. Very good. So you can trade legroom for boot space, which is good. And also piss off people who are asleep in the back by waking them up at a traffic light. Fun. 
um, so it means that you can carry reasonable loads in the boot with a little leg room or have decent leg room and okay boot space. Not bad. So it should be up to be quite a practical little package is Colt. Now there is though a reason as to why you don't see so many on the market. Number one, the Colts that are equipped with an automatic transmission have the dreadful, execrable CVT. And yes, I hate the guts out of every last one of them. And I can say right now, reliability on those is questionable at best. Mind you, if you service transmission fluids and look after them, they can give good mileage. Which brings me on to point number two with this, this being a Mitsubishi, and Mitsubishi having excellent business-to-business -business sales departments. It means that a lot of these were bought as business vehicles and sold en masse. And these things found their way into the hands of those who didn't maintain them. No, really, once they're done, they end up in those we finance any one car dealerships and got bought by those whose finances could not stretch to the maintenance of the vehicle in question. So you'll find a lot of these cars are, well, badly maintained to say the least. However, you find a good one, it can be very good. The only other real criticisms are the coolant bottle cap has a few issues, they can break, you may have a couple of the fuel, a couple of seals in the fuel system, they can have issues. And that's around the fuel filter area. That's anything, again, electrics are all relatively strong. There's not a lot of things that go wrong with this car. For a timing chain engine, it's actually really good. As long as you maintain it, and with a manual box, it'll definitely look after you. It would make a great, cheap little runaround. And you can buy them very cheap. If you throw three grand at one of these, you'll come home with an 04 to 06 Colt manual box, around about 250,000 Ks and you get a decent car out of it. As long as you look after it, it looks after you. So, no problems there. 5K buys you something around the 07 to 09 mark. Again, we're looking at ES and LS as base trim cars here. VRXs start around there in early one, but a car like this, a 2011 model year, VRX with 108,000 kilometers, you're looking at about six and a half grand for a manual. And that's where it makes a lot of sense, this car, because it's a relatively modern car for a relatively small outlay. The automatic started about five for an absolute bomb that runs and range all the way up to 10 for a loaded up VRX of this period with the automatic box. Yeah, the unreliable auto box commands a three and a half thousand dollar premium over the manual. Yes, I know. That tells you a lot about the people who buy cars like this. They want the two pedaled option. And I'd only ever buy a two pedaled Colt if the gearbox was broken and I fixed it myself. I.e. buy the car for two grand or less with a busted gearbox, spend the five to fix it. And that way you'll be at the initial $7,000 purchase price and you'll get that pretty much instantly when you're done with it. So it's not a bad investment if you buy one broken. Other things I would say about the Colt is it's not especially well equipped. Even this being the loaded up model. In this being a December 10 build, 2011 model year car, I haven't got curtain airbags. I haven't got cruise control. I haven't got controls on the steering wheel. I haven't got, and this is really stupid. I haven't even got a lap and diagonal center belt. It's only a lap belt for a car from 2010 my 1994 BMW 318i has this on it. And not to say that it was especially well equipped either. It was quite poorly equipped for its day. Yeah. <laughs> so, like the Outlanders, you get the sense with this Mitsubishi Colt that the company designing it and building it weren't especially flush with cash. I gotta say, for the budget they had, and yes, they did have the help of Daimler Chrysler, Mercedes Benz and Chrysler's unhappy marriage together, helping them out with this car, it's actually a very good package. And if you want a cheap, efficient little car, it's definitely on your list. It should be there, you should consider it. There isn't a lot to fault it for what it is. 
especially given the price what you're paying for it. It's not a lot. If you're spending six thousand dollars on a decent second-hand Colt with a hundred and something that low hundreds on the clock, you expect to get another hundred thousand k's easily out of it. It's it's fantastic value for money if you need a little run around or need a four seater, much as I would say the rear seats I'd say are only suitable for people who are either vertically challenged or children. But on the plus side, practicality for the engine, the fuel economy you get when the fuel economy in this thing is absolutely brilliant. Fundamentally, as a car, as a mode of transportation, as a manual, it makes sense. As an auto, I wouldn't touch it. But none of you are going to listen to me and going to go buy that automatic transmission because it's uh, desirable and you can't drive a manual. So really, warts and all, exposed screws and all, not so well equipped and all, it's still a very good car if you want a very cheap little run around that can carry four and have a degree of cargo. Especially if you're looking for a second family car. That's where this car really makes sense to me. If you're looking to buy this as a sort of family car to back up another car, so car number two, the sort of car that goes to, uh, goes to the train station or something like that, just a backup family car that on the weekend can carry four, that's what this car would do best. And frankly, while it may not be the most loved car in the world, the Colt is certainly a good package for those looking for a budget runaround.